What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out eight WWE wrestlers Brock Lesnar refused to work with. Brock, some would say it's not the easiest to work with. Um, he he's kind of uh, a person that's built a reputation to kind of be in a league of his own in a sense. Like he kind of gets free reign to do what he wants, say what he wants, work with whoever he wants. So when he want to work with someone. It, he usually puts his all into it when he doesn't really want to work with someone you can tell that the matches is, is it, it falls flat prime example is when he didn't want to work with i wouldn't say he didn't want to work with him but he wasn't kind of really bouncing ideas with uh dean ambrose their match they were supposed to have at wrestlemania i, I was really looking forward to hoping they were going to do something with it but it, uh, I, uh dean ambrose just came out in interviews and saying Brock didn't want to do anything that uh, Dean Ambrose has suggested. He was kind of shooting down everything. So, and that's why that match fell completely flat and it just didn't go nowhere. So when he wants to work, he'll be able, you know, he puts on good matches. When he doesn't want to work with someone, you can kind of tell. And uh, yeah, so we're going to check this out. Uh, appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. And I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world man let's get right into this video faces ain't no one gonna tell brock lesnar what to do well maybe chris jericho but other than that the beast is quite the intimidating <laughs> fellow probably best to just go with whatever he wants this does spell over in the other direction sometimes though because yep i'm sorry for what culture please massage that subscribe button this is eight wrestlers yeah, i'll definitely brock go subscribe lesnar to what uh what culture if you haven't already great jinder mahal when jinder mahal randomly became the wwe champion in 2017 so <laughs> a lot of people were shocked he literally went from enhancement talent to main eventer it didn't make sense if we had just given this some time jinder could still be riding high now we didn't do this though at all of of a sudden people started to realize that we were headed towards survivor series which meant it was going to be mahal mm -hmm. versus brock lesnar uh -oh. this was down to the fact vince mcmahon loved doing the whole wwe champ versus universal champ at that show so we all just assumed lesnar would kill him Sure, yeah, that would have happened too, but instead, the beast just went, nope, he didn't want the match. In fact, he was far more interested in working with AJ Styles, hence why the change was made. And that match was so fun. Who remembers AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar? That match was fun. That was a great audible. I am all for that. That match was cool. That was a good time. That was a fantastic match. Made to put the phenomenal one in that position. So anytime you forget how much power Brock wields, remember this. It was a fortunate former Hall who did just do exactly what he was asked. So basically, we hindered Jinder, and you should never do that. Number seven, Hardcore Holly. So this hey, did I'm, happen. I'm okay. You can go back to the 2000s. I'm okay with what the match we got. Because I did not want to see Jinder Mahal versus Brock Lesnar, no. For Raw Rumble to see it, it was fine. Short and sweet at six minutes, but clearly someone backstage thought it rocked because they wanted to turn it into a feud. As Brock wrote in his book, though, he basically told WWE to flub that shib and turn down the chance to do this for a second time on a tour of South Africa. Oh. His management was insistent this was then booked for some house shows, but you can see that Lesnar put the brakes on that too. Before long, it had been changed to tags with the big show against John Cena and Eddie Guerrero. It all ended when Brock did indeed come up with a plan. How about he squashed Holly in two minutes and we drew a line under it all. And have a guess what happened? Exactly. There was some Damn. irony to this as well because at one point, Hardcore Holly himself had been asked, well, what do you want us to do with you? And he said, win the damn belt and beat everyone. Should have changed his name. Number 16, yeah. Ambrose. I do you remember when we had that weird... I just, just talked about that roadblock pay-per-view in 2016 where it was bray wyatt and luke harper mm -hmm. versus brock lesnar everything hinted to the fact it could be wyatt versus brock at wrestlemania and then the story just stopped who knows from nowhere dean ambrose was slotted in which was even stranger because it did just happen there was a light at the end of the tunnel. The lunatic fringe made it very clear he was ready to have a barn burner with Lesnar, but there was one issue: Lesnar didn't want to do it. Now yeah, he didn't, and I, it was it was cool to see because, like Dean Ambrose, we knew he was gonna get his ass kicked, but we thought, you know, what I'm saying he's gonna put up a fight. Like he just kept coming out there week after week, not caring that Brock Lesnar was gonna destroy him. I, I, I it was like the ultimate underdog situation, but. 
Yeah, you can tell Brock, when the match came, he did not give a single F. <laughs> Whether this was due to the fact he just wasn't into Ambrose or because, as we would soon learn, he was training for a UFC return, we don't know. But the match was so lackluster because you could tell that Brock wasn't in the mood. He may as well have written it all over his face. And now yeah. John Moxley has admitted since this is what happened, what are you meant to do? You can't make somebody put in effort. Yeah. It was a shame, however, as it could have been magic absolutely was not it could have been should have been much better that sounds weird doesn't it <laughs> rock had to want to work with somebody at some point otherwise he'd basically be a ghost let me just check no he's not a ghost but on the 22nd of july 2002 when the news of vince mcmahon's retirement filtered through the system lesnar just went yeah i'm not into this anymore mm -hmm. and he left smackdown just walked out the door. This was a story for many reasons, but especially because it would have annoyed Fox, who liked dudes such as Brock on the show. And after a quick chat, I would guess with Triple H, everybody calmed the beast down and he returned. So this one is a bit of a cheat. Yeah, that was that was a, a, a story once Vince was out and he was like, fucking, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? And it was one of those things where it's like, he just kind of, he, he was going to no show. He was going to, he walked out. And I, I, I want to bring this up. Because, you know, this this was brought up in conversation. So Sasha and them, you know, walking out, obviously, you know, there's some unprofessionalism behind that. But people definitely ridiculed them. But there weren't as much ridicule for Brock doing it. Granted, they had to get him to come back. But if they didn't, if they weren't successful in that, would WWE call Brock Lesnar out on national television and said Brock was unprofessional? That's the real question you got to ask. We didn't get a chance to see that happen because he was able to come back, but would he gotten the same type of ridicule live on television like Naomi and Sasha did? That's the question we may not ever know. Because on this night, he was just scheduled to kick the crap out of Austin Theory, which he did, but still. You'd have to figure he did this because he didn't want to be put in any programs unless Vince was overseeing things. So I say that it counts before The Undertaker. Hmm. Another weird one, right? I mean, you could argue that Lesnar versus Taker is one of the most iconic feuds Brock ever had. For sure. And yet here is the dead man in the list about guys he didn't want to work with. While we all get mad about the fact Lesnar defeated The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30 and ended the streak, so did Brock. Yep. He didn't think it was a good idea for him to get this win and when it told Vince wow. McMahon exactly this, as soon as the boss's mind was made up and the phenom told him it was fine, he went and did his job. It does wow, that's crazy. He didn't even want to break the streak. From what this order, uh, from what uh, they're saying, that's interesting, huh? I'm still one of the people that say the streak should have never been broken, unless it was to like someone that you wanted to get nuclear heel heat. And honestly, it probably should have been like one of his last matches, in my opinion. The only person I could have obviously thought of at the time was Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns should have been the one person to do it. If you're going to do it, it needs to be somebody that can carry that on. Brock didn't need to beat the streak. So I didn't think he needed to, you know, to end it, in my personal opinion. You know, if you're going to have someone do that, it has to be someone that's going to be the future of the company. Brock, you know, he's just a, a special attraction. Not the future. You know, he's been there, done it all, you know, for WWE. Just go to show, though. Just because you do something on TV doesn't mean you're happy about it. Plus, everybody on their dog just respected the record. Yeah. To be fair, it did turn Brock into an end-of-level boss, a wave he is still riding high almost 10 years later. And some people say it didn't give him the rub. Number three, Matt Riddle. Well, we all know about oh, this. Oh, yeah. Matt we know his beef with Matt Riddle, boy. Matt Riddle is an interesting chap as he will say whatever he wants. It hasn't seemed to work out that wrestling can be a political minefield. And once even told Roman Reigns that the success of WWE was more than just the input of the tribal chief. <laughs> they weren't even feuding at the time. Mm -mm. He just said it. Surprise, surprise, he did the same with Brock over and over again, yeah. saying he wanted to retire the beast. And when Lesnar heard about this... He was pissed. Seeing as somebody trying to work themselves into an angle where there was no plan, Brock found Riddle at the 2020 Royal Rumble and told him, Sorry, bro, not happening. Mm -hmm. We know this because Riddle opened up about it on the Ariel Hawani show and talked about the fact that he did the same with Goldberg. Yep. Matthew really does have a knack for pissing people off. It doesn't feel like this has changed either, and you can understand why. If Lesnar truly was mad about this, he has all the power in the world 
veto any program he wants, and he has. Yeah, he's he. I don't see that ever happening. Uh, Matt Riddle, I don't know. He he just Matt Riddle. I don't know, man. He be he be picking fights with unnecessary fights with people he don't have to. So, whoops. Number two, Shane McMahon. I still oh, remember this because yeah. it was a bit baffling. As we got through SummerSlam 2016, WWE started to hint very heavily that we were ready for a Brock Lesnar-Shane McMahon feud. Mm -hmm. We were wrong because nobody was prepared for that, but hey, no. the clues were there. After all, Shane came to check on Randy Orton, who had been destroyed by Lesnar at that event. Brutal. And because Brock didn't like it, he F5'd McMahon, and there was no way that we did that for the lols. It was penciled in for WrestleMania 33, but after the success of everything between Lesnar and Goldberg at Survivor Series, the next big thing decided there was more money and credence going that way. Of course. So he went and sorted it out. I will say that Shano would have taken so many crazy bumps, it may have actually been quite fun. Yeah. But at the same time, does anybody want to see McMahon get some shots in against Brock? No. I would say... <laughs> No. It also meant we got Brock Goldberg round two at that event as Shane took on AJ Styles. As we know now, both were pretty damn good. Mm -hmm, so pretty maybe fun. Lesnar just knew. Number one, Kevin Owens. Now this, this one only came out know. recently, and it is somewhat of a surprise. Yeah. From the mouth of the road dog when he was on his podcast, though, he just dropped the fact that at some point Brock Lesnar was told it was time for a few with Kevin Owens, and Lesnar refused. Huh. The hint was that Brock didn't see KO on his level or wow. someone who could provide a realistic threat. That seems a bit much to me. Not only can Kevin flip from babyface to heel and smash it, but the man can go. He's a challenge for anyone. Yeah. I can't imagine Owens cares all that much, to be honest with you, though. Recently, he headlined WrestleMania against Stone Cold Steve Austin, which is most wrestlers' dream match. It also feels like under the Triple H regime, bigger things are planned, too. I imagine he's not losing any sleep over this, and good. I love both guys. There's no need for sadness. No of any other wrestlers that Brock Lesnar refused to work with. Make sure you let us know in the comments. Hey man, that, I did not know the Kevin Owens situation. Granted, Kevin Owens, I I think that would be a good matchup or whatnot. In my personal opinion, he's fantastic on the microphone. He does give that intensity. He can go rogue if he needs to. But you know what? He has bigger plans. They are planting seeds for something bigger for Kevin Owens. So I'm okay if they don't have a few. It's fine with me, honestly. So comment down below. Let me know which one of these wrestlers you did not know Brock Lesnar had, you know, didn't want to work with uh, in this video. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. And I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.